All praises to the most high. So tonight's topic is called, who is Cornelius? That's tonight's topic. Who is Cornelius? Okay. Get the book of John chapter 8, verse 32. John 8, verse 32. Let's read there. The book of John chapter 8, verse 32. Mm. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The Lord is saying, this is Christ speaking, he says, we shall know the truth, and the truth will make us free. Once we know the truth, we're going to be what? We are going to be delivered from captivity, from slavery. Because what is he telling us? He's telling us that we are not free. We're still slaves this day. Give me that in Baruch chapter 3, verse 8. Baruch 3 and verse 8. Before the physical deliverance can take place, we must be spiritually delivered first from Babylon, the great. Okay, read that. Baruch chapter 3, verse 8. Come on. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Read. Behold, we are at, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou mm. hast scattered us Come on. for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments Read. according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord, our God. You see that thing? It says we are yet this day in our captivity. We're still in captivity. You understand? We're still in slavery. But before we can be physically delivered, we must be spiritually delivered first and foremost. Our minds must be cleansed from all wickedness. So go back to John 8. Read verse 32 again. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Come on. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We're going to know the truth, and the truth will make us free. Why? Because we are yet this day in our captivity. And the only way we're going to get delivered is when the Lord returns. Read verse 36 now. John 8, verse 36. Come on. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 36. Great. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. You see that thing? The Son of Man is the one that is going to make us free. He will deliver us from captivity. But before he can deliver us physically, we must be spiritually delivered first and foremost. Our minds must be cleansed. We must repent. Okay? We must repent. Give me that in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 51 and verse, verse 6. Jeremiah 51 verse 6. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 6. Read. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and mm -hmm. deliver every man his soul. You see that? Deliver every man his soul. He says we must flee out of the midst of Babylon. Why? Because Babylon is America. Hold this. Give me that in Psalms 137, verse 7. Psalms 137 and verse 7. The Babylon here is not talking about the Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar. Okay? Psalms 137, verse 7. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 137, verse 7. Read. Rem remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even unto the foundation thereof. You see that thing? So he says, remember, O Lord, this is King David prophesying here. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. You understand? In the day of Jerusalem. Because when Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonians was destroying us, Edom was helping them. Go ahead. Verse 8. Read. O daughter of Babylon, who are to be... O daughter of Babylon. So Edom is the daughter of Babylon. Why? Because all the they, they, they took on all the attributes of ancient Babylon. The Babylon of Nimrod and the Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar, Neo-Babylon. Go ahead. Who are to be destroyed? Mm -hmm. Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. So now go back to, Jer go back to Jeremiah 51, verse 6, one more again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. You see that thing? It says flee out of the midst of Babylon because Babylon is America, which is called Babylon the Great. Remember, Babylon is North America, okay? That's the headquarters, but they rule over the whole earth. Hold this. Give me the book of Revelation 17, verse 18, Okay. Revelation chapter 17, verse 18. Read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 18. Go ahead. And the woman 
which thou sawest is that is that great city mm -hmm. which reigneth over the kings of the earth. He says, and the woman which thou sawest is that great city. That great city which does what? Which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Which reigneth over the kings of the earth. They rule over the whole planet earth. Get that in Revelation 14 verse 8. Let's see the name of this great city. Okay, come on. The book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 8. Right. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. Is fallen that great city that was that great city that great city come on because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication the wine of the wrath of her fornication is a policy you understand is and that's why they call it america's foreign policy you understand foreign policy and there is policy guess what there are certain rules that you must accept for america to do business with you not only that, but to, for America to be your ally. That's what it's going into. Okay? So now, that great city is Babylon the Great. So go back. Jeremiah 51. Read verse 6 again. The book of Jeremiah. Chapter 51, verse 6. Great. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and mm -hmm. deliver every man his soul. You see that? Deliver every man his soul. Why? Because guess what? They have the souls of men, meaning they're thinking. They're thinking not only did they enslave the nations, not only did they enslave us, the children of Israel, but they also enslaved our minds. That's why it says, deliver every man his soul. His soul. Why? Because they have our, they, they, they have our souls in captivity. You understand? They have our souls in captivity. Get Revelation 18. Read verse 2. The book of Revelation Chapter 18, verse 2. Go ahead. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, mm -hmm. and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Let's talk about unclean spirits, come on. For all nations have drunk of the wine of her wrath, of her fornication and the See, kings all of nations, the all nations are drunk with the with the wine of the wrath of her fornication because what is america doing america rules the nations with the roar of iron you understand they are all drunk with their wrath you understand with the wrath of her fornication they push homosexuality you understand they push these uh, demonic foreign policies okay they develop nation the currencies of nations they come and steal you on the continent of africa go ahead and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Because these nations are in bed with America. They do business with America. Go ahead. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. You see that thing now? The, the nations that are doing business with America, they are rich. Because, and where does America go? Where did America get their riches from? They got their riches from this continent. They got their riches from the continent of Africa, which is where the scattered Israelites are. The remnant, the dispersed, the diaspora. That's where we are. That's, that's where they get their riches from. They get their riches from here. Okay, because Europe don't have no riches. It's a bottomless pit. There's no resources in Europe. You understand? That's why they all come here to steal and rob and murder and rape. All the resources and leave us impoverished. That's what we're reading here. And all the nations that are doing business with America, they're also rich. They're also going to get the judgment when the Lord returns. Go ahead. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. You see that, that thing? He... Come, hold on. Come out of her, my people. Deliver every man his soul. That's what we read in Jeremiah 51 verse 6. Go ahead. That ye be not partakers of her sins. He says, don't be partakers of the sins of America. You understand homosexuality, LGBT, 50-50, democracy, you understand feminism, sodomy and all this. Don't partake in their sins. Their Christmas, their birthday, their Mother's Day, Father's Day and all of that. Go ahead. And that ye receive not of her plagues. When America is judged, we don't also want to be caught in a crosshair. We want to get delivered on that day. Jump down to verse 11. Come on. The book of Revelation, 
Chapter 18, verse 11. You know what? Start of verse 10. Start of verse 10. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment. America's saying, torment. The torment is America's destruction when the Lord returns, starting with the nations bombing America. Okay, go ahead. Saying, alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for mm. in one hour is thy judgment come. So America is going to be wiped out in one hour. It took them more than 400 years to build it, but in one hour is going to be wiped out. All praises to the most High God for that thing. Jump down to verse 15. You know what? Read, read, verse, read verse 11. Then we're going to jump. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 11. Wait. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for mm -hmm. no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Because no, no nation is going to be trading with America when the Lord brings judgment upon it. Nobody going to do nobody going to want to do business with America no more. They're going to be mourning because they got rich through doing business with America. But on this day, America is going to be judged. And the nations that were doing business with America, these large corporations, meaning the countries, they're going to mourn for America when it's burned to the ground. Jump down to verse, keep reading, keep reading, read verse 12. Verse 12, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner, manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood. Go ahead. And of brass and iron and marble. These are all the mineral resources that America is stealing from the continent. Go ahead. And cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses mm -hmm. and chariots Come on. and slaves and, and souls of men. It says, and what? What's that last part? Then slaves and what? And slaves and mm. souls of men. And slaves and slaves and souls of men. So guess what? They enslave the people and they enslave the minds of the people. So before we can be physically delivered, we must be spiritually delivered first. Go back to Jeremiah 51 verse 6. Read that again. Slaves and souls of men. Okay, come on. The book of Jeremiah. Chapter 51, verse 6. Read. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. You see that thing? Deliver every man his soul. We must deliver our souls from what? From the what? From the clutches of America, from the clutches of Europe and these Western countries. Because well, they've corrupted us. They've polluted us with their idols. They're all pushing idolatry. Okay, go ahead. Be not cut off in her, in her iniquity. Don't be cut off in her plates. Don't get caught up in America's destruction. You understand? That's what we read in Revelation 18 verse 4. Go ahead. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. You see that? This is the time of the Lord's vengeance where America is going to be in one hour a judgment is going to come. Go ahead. He will render unto her a recompense. The Lord will render unto America her just judgment. Okay, that's what we're reading. So go back to John 8, verse 32. John 8, verse 32. Read that again. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Go ahead. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You see that? We shall know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. So first, we must know the truth. And when we, are, we learn the truth, the truth, we're going to apply the truth to our lives. We're going to apply God's laws to our lives. That's what Christ is teaching us there. Now, let's get into the topic now. I just wanted to touch on that. You understand? Let's go. Let's get into the topic now. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 1. Acts 10. Let's go there. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 1. Go ahead. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, 
a centurion of the band called the Italian band. You see, in verse one right there, that's where the, a lot of our people get confused. Okay, read that again, because they say, you see, Cornelius is an Italian. Read again, verse one. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse one. Read. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. So Cornelius, Cornelius was a centurion. He was a what? He was a soldier in the Roman army. So the question is, were Israel scattered in Rome? You understand? Were Israel scattered in Italy? Yes. Let's prove that. Get that in Acts chapter 18. Okay. Acts chapter 18. Read verse 2. Start of verse 2. Acts 18 verse 2. Watch this. We touched on this when we we're going over the letters of Paul. But let's go over it again. Acts 18 verse 2. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 18 verse 2. Read. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, mm -hmm. born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with lately his wife. Come from lately come from Italy. Lately come from Italy. So there were Jews that were scattered in Italy, in Rome. Go ahead. With his wife Priscilla, mm -hmm. because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. You see that Claudius is Claudius Caesar. He commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. You understand? So did we have Israelites in Rome, in Italy? Yes. That's, we've we seen the proof right here. You understand? Get that in um, Acts chapter 21. Acts chapter 22, actually. Acts 22 verse 25. Because the apostle Paul was mistaken for a Roman. Why? Because he had Roman citizenship. He was not a Roman by birth, by nationality, but he was Roman by citizenship. Read that. Acts 22, verse 25. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 22, verse 25. Read. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? You see what he's asking? Is it, is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman? Because who is he talking about? Talk about himself. Watch this. Go ahead. When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. You see that? For this man is a Roman. Come on. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me. Art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. He says, Yeah, I'm a Roman, meaning what? I'm a Roman citizen. I'm a Roman citizen. I have Roman citizenship. You understand? Watch this. Because the Apostle Paul was not a Roman, he was not a Roman by nationality. He was a Roman by citizenship. Okay? Get that in Romans chapter 11, verse 1. Just to prove that the Apostle Paul was not a Roman by nationality. He was a Roman by citizenship. Okay, read that. The book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 1. Go ahead. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. Mm -hmm. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. You see that thing? So he's letting you know. He says, I'm an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Give me that in Luke chapter 3, verse 1. Watch this. This is when John was teaching repentance. Okay? He was not teaching anybody else but the Israelites. John 3. Read verse 1. No, Luke. Luke. Luke 3 and 1. The book of Luke, chapter 3, verse 1. Go ahead. Now in the 15th year of the reign of, the, of Tiberius Caesar. Tiberius Caesar. Go ahead. Pontus Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee. You saw he was the governor, he was the consulate of Galilee. Herod was the consulate of Galilee, while Pontius Pilate was the governor of Judea. Go ahead. And his brother, Philip, tetrarch of I Ituria. I Ituria, go ahead. Ituria, and of the region of Trachonitis. Trachonitis. Mm -hmm. And Lysanias. 
and, Go ahead. The, and the tetrarch of Abilene. Uh -huh. These are all, these are all converts here. These are Edomites. Okay, come on. Ananas the and Ananas and Cephas being Anas the high priest. Ananas, that's Ananias, Anas and Cephas, go ahead. Being the high priest, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. So now the word came unto John the Baptist, the son of Zacharias. You understand? So John was teaching repentance. So jump down to verse uh, 14. Watch this. So as he was teaching repentance to the Israelites, okay, come on. The book of Luke, chapter 3, verse 14. Right. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him. They saying, demanded of John. The soldiers is the one. The, the, is, is the soldiers is the men that were in the Roman army. You understand? Just like Cornelius was. They were, these were soldiers in the Roman army. But they were Israelites. Okay, come on. Saying, and what shall we do? And he said unto them, Mm -hmm. Do violence to no man. Go ahead. Neither accuse any falsely. Read. And be content with your wages. Meaning don't be covetous. He's teaching them what? The commandments. He says, do violence to no man. Meaning love your neighbor as yourself. Neither accuse any false. Don't bear false witness to your neighbor. And be content with your wages. Be, don't be covetous. That's what he's telling them. He's talking to the Roman soldiers. But the, were they Roman soldiers? No, they were Israelites in the Roman army, just like Cornelius was. Okay, get Acts 28 verse 16. The book of Acts, chapter 28, verse 16. Right. And when he came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. Mm -hmm. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. So now they remember the apostle Paul this is the last book of Acts, you understand? So he was going to, he was under house arrest. That's why when he was under house arrest, the, 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 the Israelites came to visit him, you understand? So to teach them about Christ. That's why the next child, the next book is the book of the Romans. Israelites scattered in Rome. So his lady, that's why he wrote, the whole book of Romans is dedicated to the Israelites that were scattered in Rome. You understand? You know, Cornelius was one of those Israelites also. Okay, go ahead. Verse 17. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, really? Men and brethren, though I, have com though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet... I was delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. You see what he's saying? He says, yet I was delivered prisoners from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. Why? Because they didn't, know, they didn't like what the apostle Paul was teaching and they accused him falsely. Okay. But the point here is there were Israelites scattered in Rome. That's why Claudius Caesar, Claudius Caesar had to command certain Israelites to depart from Rome. Okay. Go back to Acts 10 verse 1. One more again. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 1. Go ahead. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. So he was a soldier in the Roman army. Come on. A devout man. A what? A, a devout man. He was a devout man. So Cornelius was a devout man. What does that mean? Get Acts 22, verse 12. Cornelius was a devout man. Let's see what that means. Okay. Read. The book of Acts, chapter 22, verse 12. Read. And one, Ananias, a devout man according to the law. You see that? A devout man according to the law. When it says devout, meaning devoted to the law. Who was the laws given to? The laws was given to the 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. Having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there. You see that? Having a good report of all Jews which dwelt there. Letting you know what? Cornelius was a Jew. Okay, go back. Acts 10 verse 2 again. 
the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 2. Mm -hmm. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house. You see that? So Cornelius kept the commandments of the Lord and he feared the most High God. So he had a good understanding. It says with all his house, meaning his whole household, they kept the commandments, right? Which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. You see that? He says they gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. So he gave alms. You understand? He was in a cheap Negro. Go ahead. He saw, a, he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. So now the angel is, is visiting Cornelius. The angel is visiting Cornelius. Okay. Watch this. Go ahead. And when he looked on him he was afraid mm -hmm. and said what is it lord and he said unto him thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial before god now read verse 4 again come on the book of acts chapter 10 verse 4 come on and when he looked on him he was afraid and said mm -hmm. what is it lord and he said unto him Thy prayers and thy arms are come up for a memorial before God. So when you read the scriptures, you'll never find anywhere in the scriptures where the prayers of other nations, you see that it says, thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial before God. You will never read that about other nations in this book. It doesn't happen like that. That's why it says, thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial before God. Why? Because God deals with the Israelites. Give me that in Amos 3 and 1. Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Watch this. The book of Amos chapter 3 verse 1. Read. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you. O children of Israel, against the whole family which I mm -hmm. brought up from the land of Egypt. So now the subject, matter, the subject matter is about the 12 tribes of Israel. When it says the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, it's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. Saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. You see what he's saying? He says, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. That's why the judgments that are written in Deuteronomy 28, they befell us. No other, no other nation went through what we went through. No other, no other nation on this earth is going through what we are going through this day. Okay, so go back to Acts chapter 10. Acts 10, read verse 5 now. The book of Acts chapter 10, verse 5. Read. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter. So now the angel is telling Cornelius, said, listen, send men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter. You're going to find the apostle Peter over there. Send these men to go and fetch him. Go ahead. He lodged with one Simon, a tenor. So Simon, it says he lodged with one Simon, a tenor, meaning he was, he was in the leather business, leather making business. Go ahead. Whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Right. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. You see that? Go ahead. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. So Cornelius was a high-ranking soldier in the Roman army. That's why he says, and the devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. Letting you know, Cornelius was a high-ranking soldier in the Roman army. Go ahead. On the morrow, as they went on, on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Now the apostle Peter because remember, the, the angel told the angel told Cornelius, send these men to go and face their Simon Peter. 
Now, where they were, where they were going, the apostle Peter went to the rooftop. He went, uh, he says he went to the rooftop to pray. Okay, watch what happens next. Go ahead. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. While they were preparing the food, the apostle Peter fall, fell into a trance. Let's see what the definition of a trance is. One second. Okay, let's get the definition of a trance. Hold on a second. Let me share my screen so we can see what it is. Okay, read that. A trance. Read that definition. The definition of trance. Mm -hmm. a, a half conscious state characterized by absence of response to external stimuli, typically as induced by hypnosis or entered by a medium. So a trance is a half conscious state of being characterized by, abs by an absence of response to external stimuli. So what is, a, what is a trance? Let's see what a trance is. Read that. Daydream. Daydreaming. So a trance is a daydreaming. You understand? A trance is a daydream. That's what a trance is. So the apostle Peter, he fell into a trance. It, he was daydreaming. But he was daydreaming about spiritual things. The Lord put the apostle Peter in a trance, in a daydream. Okay? So a daydream, a trance is a daydream. And a dream is a night vision. You see that? Watch this. Give me 2nd Esdras chapter 10, verse 28. 2nd Esdras 10, verse 28. 2nd Esdras chapter 10, verse 28. Go ahead. Where is Uriel the angel who came unto me at the first? Mm -hmm. For he had caused me to fall into many trances. You see that? Are, this, is, this is Ezra speaking. He says, where is Uriel the angel? Because Uriel was the angel that was sent to Ezra to expound unto him many things that he was asking about. Okay, go ahead. And mine end is turned into corruption and my prayer to rebuke. So the point is, Ezra fell into many daydreams, trances, okay? Go back to Acts 10, Acts chapter 10. Read verse 10 again. The book of Acts chapter 10, verse 10. Read. And he became very hungry and would mm. have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. He fell into a daydream, come on. And saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending unto him, mm -hmm. as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth. So now we're going to deal with this. The apostle Peter, he saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto him, and as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth. Let's deal with the vessel. What is this talking about? Get that in Hosea 8 verse 8. Okay. Hosea chapter 8 verse 8. Let's see what is this vessel that the apostle Peter is seeing coming or descending out of heaven. Read that. The book of Hosea chapter 8 verse 8. Come on. Israel is swallowed up. Mm -hmm. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. You see that it says, Israel is swallowed up, meaning in captivity by the Assyrians here. Yeah? Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. So who's the vessel? Israel. Okay, go back to Acts 10. Read verse 11 again. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 11. Read. And so heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet net at the four corners and let down to the earth. So now we know the vessel, this certain vessel that descended and descending unto him, this is making reference to Israel. Yes, northern kingdom. You understand? It says, and it had been a great sheet net at the four corners. Let's see what that means. Okay, get that into Deuteronomy 32, 26. The great sheet net at the four corners. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 26. Read. I said, 
I would scatter them into corners. I will do what? I would scatter them into corners. That's part of God's judgment. The Lord is saying he will scatter Israel into corners. In the four corners of the earth, read. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. So let's go back. Acts chapter 10, read verse 11. One more again. The book of Acts chapter 10, verse 11. Read. And so heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him. Mm -hmm. as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Went into captivity. So this, this vessel is Israel. The great sheet that is knit at the four corners, Israel will be scattered among all nations on earth. They will be where? in captivity. Go ahead. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. So now, this vessel represents what? The four-footed beast, the unclean beast, and creeping things, and fowls of the earth. Go ahead. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Now the voice is telling the apostle Peter, he says, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. What is Peter says? Go ahead. But Peter said, Not so, Lord. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Because the Apostle Peter, why is he saying not so, Lord? Why? Because we are not allowed to eat unclean animals. We are not allowed to eat unclean things. That's why the Apostle Peter is saying not so, Lord. Remember, the Apostle Peter is still in a trance. Don't forget. You understand? He says, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Anything that is common or unclean. Okay, go ahead. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. Read again verse 15. The book of Acts chapter 10 verse 15. Come on. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. You see what he's saying? What God had cleansed, what God had cleansed, that call not thou common. What that mean? Let's get the book of Ezekiel, okay? Get Ezekiel 33 verse 6. Ezekiel 33 and verse 6. Not Ezekiel, Jeremiah 33. I think that's what I want. Yep, Jeremiah 33 verse 6. I think that's what I want. Yep, read it. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will bring it health and cure, mm -hmm. and I will cure them, and I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Talk about Israel. Go ahead. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return. To return back and to we'll... Jerusalem. To return back to Jerusalem in the last days when the Lord returns. Come on. And will build them as at the first. I will build them as in the days of old. Go ahead. And I will cleanse them. I will do what? And I will cleanse them. I will what? And I will cleanse them. And I will cleanse them. I will cleanse them. I will cleanse them. That's what we read when it says, Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten. No, no. Uh, it says, and the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God had cleansed, that call not thou common. Who is he talking about? Israel. Go ahead. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity whereby they have sinned against me. Mm -hmm. And I will pardon all their iniquities whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. Now give me Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 23. Ezekiel 37. We're still dealing with what the apostle Peter said when he says what God had cleansed Call not thou common. Okay, read that. Ezekiel 37 verse 23. Let's see what this is talking about. Come on. The book of Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 27. Verse 23. Verse 23. Apologies, sir. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols. You see that? With... Neither shall, hold on. Neither shall Israel defile themselves anymore 
with their idols. This is going into specifically Northern Kingdom. Go ahead, because they went into idolatry and the Lord divorced them. Go ahead. No, with their detestable things. Mm -hmm. No, with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned. Mm -hmm. And I will cleanse them. I will do what? And I will cleanse them. I will cleanse them. I will cleanse them. Come on. So shall they be my people, and I will mm -hmm. be their God. You see that? So shall they be my people, and I will be their God. Go back to Acts 10. Read verse 15 again. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And the voice spake unto him again, the second time. What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. You see that what God had cleansed. So what is he talking about? So there are the, the four-footed beasts that were unclean, creeping things and fowls of the air that were unclean represents man, represents northern kingdom. It represents man. You understand? That's what the apostle Peter was shown. So it wasn't talking about the actual four-footed beast per se, but it was a similitude, a metaphor to make in reference to Cornelius and all his house. Okay, go ahead. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. You see, this was done three times. You understand? The apostle Peter, this thing happened three times. Okay, come on. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. So now the Apostle Peter is thinking about the dream now, okay? Go ahead. And called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. Because remember, Cornelius was told by the angels, said, listen, go to Joppa and look for such and such a man. So when the Apostle Peter now is done, the, 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 is done, you know, being shown the trance or the vision, the daydream, you understand? And now the man arrives where the Apostle Peter is, they are asking for him. Okay, come on. While Peter thought on the vision, mm -hmm. the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek, seek thee. Arise, the, the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 19. Wait. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. You see what he's saying? Remember, the thing happened three times. Three men were sent unto him. So while the apostle Peter thought upon the vision, he says, the spirit said unto him, behold, three men seek thee. Okay, go and meet the men that are looking for you. Go ahead. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have, I have sent them. Right. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, behold, I am he who, whom ye seek. What is the cause where therefore ye are come? He says, why are you come? What is the reason why you have come for me? Go ahead. And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man. A and one, one man? that A just man. So Cornelius was a just man. He was a just man. Stop right there. Let's understand that. Get that in Ezekiel 18 verse 5. He says, Cornelius was a just man. Okay. Cornelius, a just man. Let's read that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 5. Right. But if a man be just and do mm -hmm. that which is lawful and right. You see that? Cornelius was a just man. He did that which was lawful and right. What does that mean? He did the commandments of the Most High God. He kept God's laws. And the laws was given to who? Israel. Okay? Get that in... Um, Get that in Luke chapter 2, verse 25. There's another one in Luke. Let's get that. Cornelius was a just man. Okay? Read that. The book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 25. Read. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the same man was just and devout. You see that? He was just and devout, just like Cornelius was. Read. 
waiting for the consolation of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. That's very important also. The Holy Ghost was upon him. He was just and devout, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Okay, go back. Acts chapter 10 now. The book of Acts. Chapter 10, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, mm -hmm. and of good report among all the nation of the Jews. You see that Cornelius was a just man. He was an Israelite of the northern kingdom tribes. He's going to clear it up as we read on. He says, and of good report among all nations of the Jews, among all the nations of the coast. Which tribes were primarily in Jerusalem when Christ walked the earth? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. You understand? That's why it says, among all nations of the Jews, the southern kingdom of Israel. That's what he's talking about. But Cornelius was not of the southern kingdom. He was of the northern kingdom. You understand? Okay, read. Was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. Read. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them. And certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. So now the apostle Peter is returning back with the men that came to look for him. And also those, the men that were in Joppa to accompany Peter and the three men that were sent by Cornelius at the, voice, at the command of the angel. Go ahead. And the morrow after, they entered into Caesarea and Cornelius waited for them mm -hmm. and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. So now Cornelius is waiting for the apostle Peter with the three men and some men that came with the apostle Peter from Joppa, you understand, to meet his kinsmen and his family friends, his family. So Cornelius called his family, his, you understand, his friends and families to come and meet the apostle Peter. Go ahead. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Now, you see that part right there? I'm going to show you something with verse 25 and 26. Read 25 and 26 together. Now, the apostle Cornelius is meeting the apostle Peter. This is what he does. Read verse 25 again. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 25. Read. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Mm -hmm. But but Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. What did he say? Stand up, I myself also am a man. He says, Stand up, I myself also am a man. Watch this. Give me that in Revelation chapter 19. Read verse 10 for me. Revelation 19 verse 10. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10. Go ahead. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. Mm -hmm. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You see what the angel is telling John? Because John says, John says he fell at his feet to worship him. The angel and he said unto him, See thou do it not. That's what the apostle, that's what the same thing the apostle Peter said. He says, Stand up. I myself also am a man. He says, I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Get that in Revelation 22, verse 8. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 8. Go ahead. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard them, and when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Ray, which showed me these things. Come on. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, mm -hmm. for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, the prophets, mm. and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. You see that thing? 
The same thing that the angel told the apostle uh, John the Revelator is the same thing that the apostle Peter is telling Cornelius. What am I, why am I going over this? Go back to Acts 10. Read 26, read 25 and 26 together. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 25. Go ahead. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. Meaning, what is he saying? He said, listen. See thou do it not. You understand? See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophet. You understand? That's the same thing the apostle Peter is telling Cornelius here. Just like the angels were telling their John the Revelator. Okay? I hope you can see the connection here. Okay? So what is the apostle Peter saying? Listen, I'm your fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophet. Just like you are. Go ahead. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many there who were come together. Meaning many of Cornelius' family members and his friends, they were come together. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto one of another nation. Stop right there. Stop right there. You see what he's saying? It says, and he said unto them, ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew. What is he talking about? A man that is of the northern, the southern kingdom of Israel, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, to keep company, to come, to keep company or come unto one of another nation. Who is this talking about? The another nation is talking about who? Cornelius. The Jew here is the southern kingdom of Israel because that was the primary tribes that was in Jerusalem when Christ walked the earth, even after he left. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and the remnant of northern kingdom. Okay, read that again, verse 28. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 28. Pray. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto another, to, and, or, or come unto one of another nation. Mm -hmm. But God hath shewed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. He says, God has showed me. Okay, just use the word show. What the hell is this? Read the verse again. Apologies, sir. Uh, the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 28. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto one of another nation. Stop right there. Or to, or to come unto one of another nation. Let's go right back to Ezekiel 37. Go back to Ezekiel 37. Now read verse 22. Ezekiel 37 verse 22. Watch this. It says what? Or to keep company or come unto one of another nation. What that mean? Let's read it. Ezekiel 37, read verse 22 now. The book of Ezekiel. Chapter 37, verse 22. Go ahead. And I will make them one nation. I will in the do what? And I will make them one nation. I will make them one nation. Why? Because there was a split in the nation of Israel. You understand? There was a split in the nation. You had southern kingdom and northern kingdom. Hold that. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 14. Let's get that real quick. There was a split in the nation. Okay. The book of Zechariah, chapter 11, verse 14. Then I cut asunder mine other staff, even bend, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. You see that? So now there was a split in the nation. So go back to Ezekiel 37, verse 22. After Solomon died under Rehoboam, and Rehoboam, Yan and Jeroboam, the kingdom was split into two. Okay, read that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 22. Ray. And I will make them one nation mm -hmm. in the land upon the mountains of Israel. Ray. And one king shall be king to them all. One king and shall they... be king to them all. This goes back into what we read in Hosea 1, verse 11. Go ahead. And they shall be no more two nations, 
neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. You see what he's saying? He says, they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Two kingdoms anymore at all. Two, no more two nations. You understand? So let's go back. Acts chapter 10, verse 28. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 28. Come on. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. You see that? Of one of another nation. Talking about who? Cornelius. The Jews talk about the southern kingdom of Israel, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, which was called Jews. Okay? To keep company, meaning to deal with or come unto one of another nation, meaning northern kingdom, because there was a split in the nation after King Solomon died. Go ahead. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. You see that thing? But God has showed me that I should not call any man, any man, any man common or unclean. What is the man here making reference to? Cornelius. Of the northern kingdom. Jump back up to verse um, 15. Acts 10 verse 15. The book of Acts chapter 10 verse 15. No, no. And read, the, verse 14. And, read, read verse 14. Verse 14. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. You see in verse 15, what is verse 14 is saying? It says, anything that is common or unclean, anything, verse 28 is clearing it up, letting you know, it's not talking about the actual animals, but the animals was a metaphor for what? The people, Northern Kingdom, Cornelius in this instance, him and his family and his friends, any man common or unclean. What is the man? Northern Kingdom of Israel. You understand? Now jump down to verse, um, you know what? Give me John 4. John chapter 4. Let's get, on, let's get another account here. So because here, the Apostle Peter, the Lord used the Apostle Peter to be able to what? He put the spirit on the Apostle Peter to understand the mystery that Northern Kingdom must be brought back into the fold. The Apostle Peter was the first one to understand that. Okay. Now, let's get to John 4 now. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Let's read verse 7. The book of John chapter 4 verse 7. Read. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. You see that? Christ said unto this woman of Samaria, Give me to drink. Come on. For his, di for his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest... Hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How is it that thou being a what? How is it that thou being a Jew? How is it that you being a Jew, meaning a Jew from the southern kingdom, how is it that you being the southern kingdom of Israel, just like we read in what? We read in Acts chapter 10 verse 28, that he says it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew. That's the same thing that the Samaritan woman is telling Christ here. How is it that thou being a what? Read that again, verse 9. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 9. Read. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? Mm -hmm. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. You see that thing? Because this woman understood the history. It says, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews, because the Jews, the southern kingdom, have no dealings with the northern kingdom. You understand? Get that in Isaiah 7 verse 9. Don't we understand who's the Samaritan woman? The Samaritan woman, who is she? Okay, let's get that. Isaiah 7 verse 9. The book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 9. Read. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. You see that? The capital of city of Ephraim is Samaria. Go ahead. 
and the head of Samaria is Remeli's son. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. So let's go back. John chapter 4 verse 9. The book of John chapter 4 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. For the southern kingdom of Israel have no dealings with the northern kingdom. That's what she's saying. Jump down to verse 12. Verse 12. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us... Hold on. Art thou greater than what? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Art thou greater than our father? Are you greater than our father Jacob? So what is the woman saying? The woman is letting him know that, listen, I know that I'm in, I'm, I'm Israel. I mean, she's telling us that I'm an Israelite. You understand? I'm an Israelite. So the, the Samaritan woman was an Israelite from the tribe of Ephraim. That's why he is saying, are you greater than our father, Jacob? She's letting you know she's an Israelite. Go ahead. Which gave us the well and drank, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. You see what he's saying? So now, go jump back up to verse 9. John 4 verse 9 again. The book of John chapter 4 verse 9. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, mm -hmm. How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans until now. Go back to Acts 10. Acts 10 verse 28 again. The Jews had no dealing with the Samaritan until this time. Because Christ is the one that went first to deal with the Samaritan woman, which was northern kingdom. But the apostles, did, their disciples didn't get it yet. Until the book of Acts chapter 10, when the apostle Peter, the Lord, kindled his spirit to see what was going on. But during the time of John 4, they didn't get it yet. They didn't understand it yet. You understand? Until Acts 10, when the apostle Peter's spirit was opened. Okay, go back to Acts 10, verse 28. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 28. Read. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is, an un it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come. Oh, apologies, sir. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 28. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. Right. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Until now, until this time now, when now Northern Kingdom is brought back into the fold. But Christ is the one that had to do it first, but they still didn't get it yet. Why? Hold this. Give me the book of Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, read verse 8. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. No, 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 no. Acts 1, read verse 3. Acts chapter 1, verse 3. Watch this. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 3. Mm -hmm. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion. Meaning by after men... his life, hold on. After when he says to whom also he showed himself alive. Talk about the disciples. After his passion when he died and resurrected the third day. You understand? And he was with them for 40 days after he resurrected. Come on. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Right. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. Ye have heard of me. So he says, listen, tarry at Jerusalem until the promise of the Father be fulfilled. Go ahead. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. You see that thing? Not many days hence. Meaning after Christ died and resurrected, 
You understand? After the death of Christ, they are going to receive the Holy Ghost. They will receive the Holy Ghost. And then over time, the Holy Ghost will jump on them in Acts, the second chapter, during the, the, the Feast of Pentecost, when it jumped on the southern kingdom of Israel. In Acts 10, it still jumped, it was still on the southern kingdom of Israel, but now northern kingdom must be brought back into, was being brought into the fold again through Cornelius. You understand? Now go back to Acts now, 10 verse 29. The book of Acts, chapter 10 verse 29. Read. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for. I ask therefore, for what intent ye have sent for me? Go ahead. And this is what Cornelius said. Watch this. He's responding to the Apostle Peter. Go ahead. And Cornelius said, Four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. Mm. Go ahead. That's the angel. Go ahead. And said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard. And thine arms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. I want you to stop right there. Read that verse again. Read verse. Read, 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 read verse. Read verse 30 again. I'm going to show you who the angel is. Read that, read that verse again. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 30. Read. And Cornelius said, Four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. Mm -hmm. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, yes. Cornelius, thy prayer is heard and thine arms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. So now this, this man that appeared unto Cornelius in bright clothing, what did he say? Thy prayer is heard and thine arms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Give me the book of Tobit, okay? Give me Tobit, Tobit chapter 12. Let's start at verse 13. The book of Tobit, chapter 12, verse 13. Ray, you know what? And Hold it. Give me the book of Revelation. Get me chap Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8, read verse 2. You know what? Start at verse 8. Start at verse 1. Start at verse 1. The book of Revelation. Chapter 8, verse 1. Go ahead. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. So because when the seventh seal is open, we are going to be in the land. We are going to be in the wilderness at this time. When the seventh seal is open, we are going to be in the wilderness. You understand? Right now we are in the fifth seal. Israel is getting themselves together. In the sixth seal is going to be destruction. The seventh seal, we are going to be in the wilderness when the Lord will teach us again. Read that again, verse 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 8, verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Read. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Read. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon mm -hmm. the golden altar, which was before the throne. You see that this angel right here, it says that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne so this angel is the way his job is to present the prayers of the saints before the most high god go ahead and the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before god out of the angel's hand so now give me tobit now tobit 12 verse 13 the book of tobit chapter 12 verse 13 go ahead and when thou didst not delay to rise up and leave thy dinner to go and cover the dead, thy good deed was not hid from me, but I was with thee. So the angel is taking his telling Toby, he said, listen, when you were burying the dead, Toby, I was there. Go ahead. 
And now God had sent me to heal thee. And Sarah, thy daughter-in-law. Come on. I am Raphael, mm. one of the seven holy angels. Great. Which present the prayers of the saints and which go in and out before the glory of the Holy One. You see that thing? So Raphael is the angel that came to present himself before Cornelius. Go back to Acts 10 now. Acts chapter 10, read verse 30 again. The book of Acts chapter 10, verse 30. Mm -hmm. And Cornelius said, Four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. Come on. And said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine arms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. That's Raphael now. Go ahead. Stand therefore, Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Right. Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Come on. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Come on, watch this. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Stop right there. Read that again, verse 34. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 34. Now remember, they, they are both, they, they, they remember, Cornelius is explaining what has happened. You understand? So now after the apostle Peter hearing all this, this is what he had to say. Read verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. He says, I pay of a truth I perceive that God is not a respecter of persons. What is he talking about? Watch this. Because in the Christian church, they use this verse to say, you see, God can call anybody even, though, even if they are not Israel into this truth. No. Watch this. Give me that in Exodus 2, the last verse. Exodus 2.25. Let's see who is he talking about. Okay. God does, he, does, he has no, he is no respecter of persons, but he does respect the Israelites. We what you got. The book of Exodus, chapter 2, verse 25. Mm -hmm. and, go, and God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Read again. The book of Exodus, chapter 2, verse 25. Come on. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. You see that? God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. So go back. So re remember, what we just read in Acts 10 is talk about Israel. So go back to where was that? Acts 10, 34. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 34. Read. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth. I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Now we know that he's talking about the Israelites. In this context, talk about who? Cornelius. The apostle Peter is making reference to Cornelius. Why? Because Cornelius was an Israelite. Read. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. You see what he's saying? He says, and he in every nation, because Israel is scattered among all nations and says, he that feareth God. Remember, Cornelius said he feared God. You understand? And worketh righteousness. Cornelius was a righteous man. He kept God's commandments. He says, is accepted with him. Now he's going to tell you who that is. Go ahead. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You see that? So Cornelius was an Israelite. Read on. That word I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism of John, after the baptism which John preached. Because 
uh, John, the apostle John, he taught the gospel of baptism. He was baptizing with water, which was temporary. Okay, go ahead. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for mm. God was with him. You see that? Go ahead. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. That's Acts chapter 5, is 29 through 32. Go ahead. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Great. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, mm -hmm. even to us. Stop right there. Who, even to what? Even to us. Even to us. Who's the us? He's talking about the Apostle Peter. He's talking about himself. Southern Kingdom. Even to us. That Southern Kingdom is making reference to. Go ahead. Even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Great. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of a quick and of a quick and dead. To be the judge of the quick and dead. Because why? Because now we're gonna believe on Christ, no longer upon the what the ordinances that was against us, which is the law of animal sacrifice. Go ahead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins read that again verse 43 because there's another part where when it says whosoever believeth in him verse 34 is another christian stumbling block verse 43 is another christian stumbling block the word that they stumble upon is that part when it says whosoever another place where they stumble is verse 28 when it says um it is, it is what you know that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto one of another nation because they don't know the history of Israel. They don't know the split in Israel. They don't understand that mystery. Okay? Read verse 43 again. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 43. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Whosoever believeth in him shall receive the remission of sins. Get that in Acts 2 21. Let's see who's the whosoever that believeth in him shall receive the remission of sins. Read that. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 21. Read. Right. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Read. Right. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. You see, Jesus that? Of so the subject matter is the Israelites. So the whosoever that shall call upon the name of the Lord that shall be saved shall receive the shall receive um is a believer in him shall receive the remission of sins. Is talk about Israel, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. It's not talk about all nations. So go back, Acts 10, verse 43 again. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 43. Mm -hmm. To give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Whosoever, receive, whoever, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Let's talk about Israel. Next verse. Watch this. Come on. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on, on all them which heard the word. Now, that's very important right here. Read that again, verse 44. Let's understand what he's saying. Read again. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 44. Read. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. He says, uh, while the apostle Peter spake these words, it says, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. Who's the them that heard the word? Northern Kingdom. Cornelius and his friends and family, they also what? The Holy Ghost fell upon them. The same spirit that fell upon the southern kingdom in Acts 2 also fell upon northern kingdom through Cornelius and his friends and his family. Get, in, get that in Acts chapter 2, read verse 4. Acts chapter 2, 
verse 4. Watch this. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 4. Come on. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So they were, it says, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, other languages. Go ahead. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews. That about right there. It says, and they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews. That's the southern kingdom of Israel. Go ahead. Devout men mm -hmm. out of every nation under heaven. You see that? So the same way that the northern, the southern kingdom, the speed, the Holy Ghost fell upon them, like we read in Acts chapter 1, verse 3 through 4, when it says they must wait upon the promise of the Holy Ghost that will fall upon them after Christ resurrected and went back to the Father. That was the promise. The promise is fulfilled in Acts chapter 2, verse 4 down during the Feast of Pentecost. But not only, not only that, guess what? In Acts 10, the Holy Ghost, not only did it fall upon the, north, the southern kingdom, but it also fell upon the northern kingdom through Cornelius and his friends and family. Go back to Acts 10, read verse 44, one more again. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 44. Read. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Meaning northern kingdom, Cornelius, come on. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. They were astonished. They were like, whoa, what's going on? Because they thought that God, the Most High, was only dealing with Judah only. You understand? But that was necessary because according to Zechariah 12 verse 7, the Holy Ghost will fall upon southern kingdom first. And when southern kingdom has received the Holy Ghost, then the prophecy will now move to northern kingdom because the prophecy needed to be fulfilled that was prophesied in Zechariah 12, verse 7. Go ahead. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see that? It says those that as many as came with Peter. Remember, there were those that accompanied the apostle Peter. You understand? Read that in Acts 10, 21. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 21. Then Peter went down to the men you know which was... Read verse 23. Verse 23. That's the one. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 23. Go ahead. Then called he them in and lodged with them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them. And certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. You see that part? And certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. So that's the, that's, the, that's the man that he's making reference to. Go back to Acts 10, verse 45. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 45. Mm -hmm. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter. You see that? Because... As many, hold on. As many as came with Peter. That's the, word, that's the same man. He says, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. That's the many, the many that came with the Apostle Peter. That's what he's talking about. Go ahead. Because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. He says that also on the Gentiles was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. So the same gift that was poured upon the Southern Kingdom in Acts 2 was also poured upon the Northern Kingdom in Acts 10 through Cornelius. You understand? But you see that part right there? He says, because of that on the Gentiles also was poured out of was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Gentiles. Hmm. Let's get second Maccabees. You understand? Uh let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, let's start in Second Maccabees. Let's let's start in Second Maccabees. Okay. Second Maccabees 6, verse 6. Because uh, during the time of Christ, hmm, you know what? Get John 7:35. Let's do it like this. John 7, verse 35. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 35. Read. Right. Then said the Jews among themselves, mm -hmm. Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Let's talk about Christ. So the Jews that spoke among themselves was the southern kingdom of Israel. The scribes and Pharisees, it says, 
Whether will he go that we are not going to find him? Go ahead. Will he go unto the dispersed among the, the Gentiles? Will he go unto the dispersed? Will he go unto the dispersed? Will he go unto the dispersed? Hold that. Give me that in James 1 and 1. Will he go unto the dispersed? Who's the dispersed? Okay. James chapter 1 verse 1. The dispersed means the diaspora. The scattered Israelites. Okay. That's what the dispersed. The dispersed is diaspora. Okay. The scattered. Read it. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 1. Go ahead. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. to, the 12 to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. You see that? To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. Now, watch this. Mm. So the dispersed is the diaspora, right? Watch this. Let me share my screen real quick. Now I want you to read that. The definition of diaspora. Read that. The, def the definition of diaspora. Mm -hmm. The dispersion of the Jewish people beyond Israel. You see that? The dispersion of the Jewish people beyond Israel. Don't worry about that word Jewish. They are trying to bring Amalek into this. He's not talking about them. Watch this. Um... Read that. Jewish people living outside Israel. You see, Israelites living outside of the land of Israel, meaning the scattered Israelites in 70 AD and before 70 AD. Okay. Um, read that. People who have spread or been dispersed from their homeland. You see that? Watch this. Now I want you to read that thing right there. Let's see where the scholars get the word dispersed, diaspora from. Read that. Greek, from diasporian, disperse, mm -hmm. from dia, across. Across, come on. Plus, sparian, scatter. You see that? It says Greek, from diasporian, disperse, from dia, across, sparing to scatter. Go ahead. The term originated in the Septuagint, Septuagint. Septuagint. the Greek Septuagint. Septuagint. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 25. You see where the word dis diaspora comes from? The word diaspora comes from the word dispersed, and they got it from the Deuteronomy 28, verse 25, when they were translating the, the scriptures from Hebrew to Greek. Get that in Deuteronomy 28, verse 25. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 25. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Come on. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. Read. And shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. You see that? You shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. What does that mean? They are going to be dispersed into all the kingdoms of the earth. That's what he's talking about right there. Okay, now read that. Read that last part right there. Thou shalt be what? Thou shalt be a dispersion in all kingdoms of the earth. That's what we just read. Okay, that's what we just read. Now, um, go back now. Go back to John 7 verse 35. The book of John chapter 7 verse 35. Read. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Mm -hmm. Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? You see what he's saying? He says, Will he go unto the dispersed, meaning the diaspora, the scattered Israelites amongst the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? You see what the scattered Israelites among these lands, you see what they were called? They were called Gentiles. That's the thing that Christians don't understand. They don't understand that because they don't keep God's commandments and they reject the doctrine of the Messiah. That's why they are confused and lost. Okay? Now, give me Second Maccabees 6 and 6. Because the scattered Israelites, you understand, that were scattered in those Greek islands 
They completely went into idolatry. They were completely following Greek customs. They were completely Hellenized. You understand? Unlike the Jews in Jerusalem. Read that. Second Maccabees 6 verse 6. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 6. Read. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So under the Greeks, we could not profess ourselves to be Jews. Hence why we were, we were calling ourselves Gentiles, because we were completely Hellenized under Greek culture. Read. And in the day of the king's birth, every month they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in possession in, in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. Go ahead. Moreover, they went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen mm -hmm. by the suggestion of Ptolemy, Ptolemy. Go ahead. against the Jews that against they the Jews, against the Jews that were scattered among the Gentiles, the Greeks, right? Against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. You see that thing, they are heathen customs, right? And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Mm -hmm. Then might a man have seen the present misery. You see what he's saying? And whoso of the Israelites would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. So you see what was going on during the time of the Greeks? We were forced to become Gentiles and we call ourselves Gentiles, we call ourselves Greeks. So now the scattered Israelites in those Greek islands they completely assimilated into Greek culture. But the Jews in Jerusalem, guess what? They were still keeping the commandments, doing sacrifices and all that. That's why the gospel was sent to them first. Do you understand? Until such time where Northern Kingdom was to be brought into the fold through Cornelius and his friends and his family. Okay? Go back to where he was at now. Acts chapter 10 verse 45. The book of Acts. Chapter 10, verse 45. Read. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see that? So those Gentiles is talking about the northern kingdom of Israel. That's why they were called Gentiles. They were scattered in those lands, completely assimilated under Greek culture. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew chapter 4. Okay, Matthew 4 verse 12. The book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 12. Read. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. Mm -hmm. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum which is upon the sea coast in the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali. So now what's happening here is, so when John was cast into prison, Christ went into Galilee. He left Nazareth. He came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast in the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali. This is northern kingdom of Israel. Go ahead. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. So what saying, Christ was doing, what Christ was doing was fulfilling the prophecy that was written in Isaiah. Let's get there. Isaiah 9 verse 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 1. Read. Right. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation. Meaning Israel, come on. When at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun. Northern kingdom. And the land of Naphtali. Northern kingdom, come on. And afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea. Mm -hmm. Beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. You see what he's calling them here? He didn't say Galilee of the Gentiles. He says Galilee of the nations. Because the word heathen, Gentiles, nations 
is the same, is synonymous. But guess what? There's times in the Bible where Israel is called Gentiles because of what? Going into idolatry, following Gentile customs. Go ahead. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. That great light is Christ that went to Northern Kingdom to teach Northern Kingdom of Israel. Go ahead. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, mm -hmm. upon them hath the light shined. Upon them had the light shine, meaning Christ has brought the understanding unto them. Get that in, um, um, let's get that in Psalms 106 verse 35. The book of Psalms, chapter 106 verse 35. Wait. Right. But were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. But the way we, we got mingled among the heathen or the nations or the Gentiles and learned their works. We became Gentiles ourselves by our conduct and behavior because we assimilated completely into their culture. Okay. So let's go back. Matthew chapter 4. Read verse 15 now. The book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 15. Read. The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea beyond J Jordan. Galilee of the Gentiles. You see that beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. So Northern Kingdom of Israel was called Gentiles because why? They went into idolatry. They started following Greek culture. Go ahead. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. Mm -hmm. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, Light is sprung up. Because Christ went over there. Now, go back to Acts 10. Acts 10 verse 45 again. The book of Acts chapter 10 verse 45. Read. Right. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter. Because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Read. Right. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, so Can he any. He says, Hold on. He says, For they heard them speak with tongues, meaning they also started to speak with other languages, like when what we read in Acts 2 during the Feast of Pentecost, and magnified God. Then answered Peter, What did he say? Go ahead. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water? Can any man forbid water, meaning baptism? Go ahead. That these should not be baptized. That these should not be baptized, that northern kingdom should not be baptized. Because remember, they also now, they got the gift of the Holy Ghost, just like the southern kingdom. Read. Which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. As well as we, as well as us, southern kingdom. Read. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So they prayed the apostle Peter to stay with them certain days. So, but the key is, it says he commanded them to be, to be baptized in the name of the Lord. They were baptized also. You understand? They were also, they also got baptized. Now, but watch this. Give me that in Acts chapter 13. Because there was a lot of discussions regarding the Gentiles being brought back in. The Apostle Peter dealt with this. The Apostle Paul had to deal with this also. Watch this. Acts chapter 13. Read verse 45. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 13 verse 45. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and you spake against. They were, they were filled with envy. They were filled with jealousy. The Jews, meaning the southern kingdom, when they saw the multitudes, they were filled with jealousy. Come on. And spake against those things which were spoken by Paul. And they were speaking against the things that were spoken by the apostle Paul. Go ahead. Contradicting and blaspheming. They were contradicting and blaspheming the things that the apostle Paul taught and Barnabas. Go ahead. Then Paul. And Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God 
should first be spoken to you. It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Go ahead. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Read that again, read that again, read that again. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 46. Read. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first be spoken to you. Is but it, see. Hold on. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first, should first, should first have spoken to you. But seeing that you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of an everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles, meaning northern kingdom. Now, let's get the prophecy. Get that in Zechariah 12. We read this all the time, brothers. Just put the pieces together. Zechariah 12, verse 7. Let's get the prophecy. The book of Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 7. Read. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. You see that? The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. That's why when it says you must wait upon the promise of the Father, that was based on what? Zechariah 12, verse 7. Go ahead. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. You see that? Do not magnify themselves against Judah. So Judah was going to get the, 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 the teachings of Christ first, then the northern kingdom was going to be brought into the fold through Cornelius, you understand, secondly, but firstly, the Samaritan woman, then Cornelius in Acts 10 through the Apostle Peter. You men understand that? Yes, sir. Well, yes, sir. You understand that? Yes, yes, sir. sir. Okay, don't be some dumb Negroes up in here. What the hell is this? Give me that in Acts 15 verse 7. This is very serious, brothers. Don't be sleeping up in here. Our people, they need this. I need you men to understand this thing. In and out. Acts 15, verse 7. Read what you got. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 7. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So now the Apostle Paul, remember, this is Acts 15. But Acts 10, you, the, the event has already taken place. Now the Apostle Peter is, 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 is explaining again what took place in Acts 10. But now there's a lot of arguments because why? The Jews, the southern kingdom of Israel, they're still compelling northern kingdom to do what? To to still perform the, the sacrifices, the animal sacrifice, sacrifice ordinances of Moses. You understand? But the Apostle Peter said, no, no, they must learn about Christ. You understand? They don't need to be doing animal sacrifices. They must learn about Christ now. So now you have the southern kingdom of Israel, the scribes and Pharisees that were causing confusion in the churches when the Apostle Paul needed to go and teach. You understand? Read that again, verse 7. The book of Acts. Chapter 15, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. You see that? Is that the, is that the Gentiles by my mouth? Who were the Gentiles? Cornelius. Cornelius. By his mouth, remember, he saw the trance. He was in the trance. He saw um, a vessel coming down, descending from heaven. You understand? As a great sheet needed the four corners and so forth. So guess what? He saw that. So now he's explaining to them, saying, listen, there's no need for them to do all of that because what? They must now learn about Christ. Okay? Go ahead. And God, which knoweth the hearts, mm -hmm. bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. You see that? Even as he did unto us. It says, God which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost. Remember, 
Cornelius was a, was a just man. He was devout. He gave many arms. He kept the commandments. He feared the most High God. You understand? So now he says, um, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Go back to Acts 10. Read verse 47. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 47. You know what? Read Acts 10, 41. Then we're going to jump down to verse 47. You know what? Just read verse 47. Let's get to the point. Verse 47. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 47. Read. Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? You see that? He says, they have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. So therefore, the Apostle Peter is repeating the same event again because there was what? There was arguments in the church. Go back to Acts chapter 15, read verse 9. The book of Acts chapter 15, verse 9. Mm -hmm. And put no difference between us and them, mm -hmm. purifying their hearts by faith. You see that thing? The Lord put no difference between us, meaning Southern Kingdom, and them, Northern Kingdom, purifying their hearts by faith, their faith in Christ now. All 12 tribes of Israel, there's no difference, meaning what? Go back to Ezekiel 37 verse 22 again, because we read this earlier. Okay? We read it earlier. Ezekiel 37 verse 22. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37 verse 22. Pray. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. Mm -hmm. And they shall be no more two nations. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. You see that? Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Why? Because what we're reading here says what? Go back to where was it? Acts 15 verse 9. The book of Acts chapter 15 verse 9. Mm -hmm. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. You see that? He did not put a difference between southern kingdom, northern kingdom, because we must all be purified with the what? With the blood of Christ now. You understand? We must all believe on Christ. The sacrifice that he made plus keeping of the commandments of the Most High God. Jump down to verse 13. Watch this. Because the Apostle Peter had to address this. The Apostle James had to address the same thing also. Watch what the Apostle James says. Read that verse 13. The book of Acts chapter 15 verse 13. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, Hearken unto me. Go ahead. Simeon hath declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles. You see that? Simeon, that's Simon Peter, the apostle Peter, declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles. Talking about who? Cornelius in Acts 10. Go ahead. To take out, to take out of them a people for his name. You see that? To take out of them a people for his name. Why? Because the name of the Lord was not was on them, but the Lord had cast them off. Why? Because they had gone into idolatry. Read. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written. Read that again, verse 15. The book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 15. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written. So now, remember, in Acts 15, verse 7 through 9, the Apostle Peter is explaining to them what happened in Acts 10. The Apostle James now, to emphasize the point, the Apostle James said, listen, the Apostle Peter has already explained what took place in Acts 10. Now the Apostle James is said, listen, I'm going to add some more. I'm going to quote what happened in the past. You understand? I'm going to explain to you what happened in the past according to the prophecy. Okay? Read verse 15 one more again. The book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 15. Read. And to this, agree the words of the prophets as it is written. Agree the words of the prophets as it is written. He's going to quote into the New Old Testament. Go ahead. After this, I will return and I will build again the tabernacle of David. 
which is fallen down, mm-hmm. and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. You see what he's saying? And I will set it up. It says, after this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. He's quoting the book of Amos. Let's get there. Amos 9, verse 11. The book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 11. Read. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen Mm -hmm. and close up the breaches thereof. You see that? And I'm going to close the breaches thereof. The breach meaning what? The crack, the split. I'm going to repair that breach because there was a split between Judah and Israel. So he's saying, listen, Amos is prophesying here. You understand? He's prophesying. Amos is prophesying about Cornelius. That's what Amos is doing. Read that again, verse 11. The book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 11. Read. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. Because under King David, all 12 tribes was together. Under King Solomon, all 12 tribes was together. So guess what he says? I'm going to build it again as in the days of old. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. All 12 must be brought together as one. So he's reminding us that during the time of King David, King Solomon, all 12 was together. So it says that's exactly what we want to do. That's what, that's what the bringing back of Northern Kingdom back into the fold is about. So that we are no longer two nations, but we are one fold under one shepherd, which is Christ, the Lord, our Savior. Okay, go ahead. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. That we may possess the remnant of Edom. Go ahead. And of all the heathen. The rest of the nations. Go ahead. Which are called by my name. Which call themselves Christians. They call themselves Jewish. They say they are the people of God. The Ishmael says they are the chosen. White people said they are the Christians. So on and so forth. Go ahead. Say it the Lord that doeth this. Let's go back. Acts 15. Read verse 17 now. The book of Acts. Chapter 15. Verse 17. Mm-hmm. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord. Read. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, mm-hmm. saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Read that again, verse 17. This is some heavy stuff here. The book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 17. Mm-hmm. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord. Stop right there. And you see this part right there? That the residue of men might seek after the Lord. Here, the apostle James didn't mention the names of the races you of those men. But Amos is mentioning them. He says what? Go back to Amos 9. Read verse 12. The book of Amos chapter 9 verse 12. Read. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. You see that? He's letting you know who, the, who those residue of men are. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord. That they may possess that we may what? That they may possess the remnant of Edom. Who's that remnant of Edom? Get that in Ezekiel 36. Okay. Ezekiel 36, read verse 5. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 5. Read. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen. The residue of the heathen, come on. And against all I do mere. He's telling you who those residue are of the heathen in our land. You understand? But he's mentioning the Edom, Esau, Edom, Jewish, Amalek, primarily because they are the ones that are saying they are the Jews. They are calling themselves Jewish. The Palestinians, not so much, but the Palestinians, all they are saying is that that's their land. They're also going to get the judgment, okay? They are not going to escape this. Go ahead. Which have appointed my land into their possession. You see that? They appointed God's land into their possession. Read 1948 under the League of Nations. Come on. 
with the joy of all their heart, mm -hmm. with despiteful minds, to cast it out for a prey. Let's go back. Amos 9. Read verse 12 again. The book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 12. Mm -hmm. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. That's Amalek. Go ahead. And of all the heathen. The rest of which the are, heathen, go ahead, that call themselves Christians, read. Which are called by my name. That's what it means there, which are called by my name. They say they are Christians. They say they are spiritual Israel. They say they are adopted into the faith. Go ahead. Sayeth the Lord that doeth this. Go back to Acts 15, read verse 17 one more again. The book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 17. Read. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord. Stop right there. So the, regis, the residue of men, that's talk about Esau, Edom, first and foremost, and the rest of the heathens that support them. Is that, that they might seek after the Lord. How are they going to seek after the Lord? Get that in Isaiah 14 verse 1. This is how they're going to seek after the Lord. In slavery, in captivity. All these nations, they're going to seek after the Lord in captivity. Okay. Because right now, they don't want to keep God's commandments. They are going to be forced on that day if they don't. Read what you got. Come on. Um, apologies, sir. Lost my bedding. Isaiah 14, verse 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 1. Read. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel mm -hmm. and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. You see that? And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Go ahead. And the people shall take them, and bring them to their place. Mm -hmm. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord, for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, Whose captives they were. Read. And they shall rule over their oppressors. So now what we're reading here, right here, is as we're going to rule over our oppressors. So these nations, when it says that the residues of men might seek after the Lord, they're going to seek after the Lord in captivity. That's what we're reading right here. You understand? They're going to seek after the Lord in slavery. Watch this. Every knee shall bow and every what? Every mouth shall conf confess that he's the Lord, he's Lord of Lords, King of kings, Lord of lords. Get that in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16. Let's get some examples how they're going to seek after the Lord in captivity. Because they must keep God's commandments, including all the high holy days. Because right now, the nations, they are celebrating Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day, Christmas, New Year. You understand? All these pagan holidays, guess what? They don't want to keep God's commandments. But on that day, they are going to observe the high holy days. Why? Read what you got. Zechariah 14, verse 16. The book of Zechariah, chapter 14, verse 16. Read. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, mm -hmm. the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacle. You see that? They're going to observe. He's giving an example of some of the feasts that they're going to have to observe. The example of that is given the Feast of Tabernacles. They're going to have to observe the feast. They're going to come to Jerusalem to observe the Feast of Tabernacles. Go ahead. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. You see that? They says they're not going to be no rain in their land if they don't come to worship the king of Jacob. No rain, that means there's going to be drought. That means there's going to be famine. There's going to be death. Go ahead. And if the family of Egypt go now, not now, up... Now he's giving an example of the Egyptians, the Hamites. Okay, go ahead. And come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague. Mm -hmm. wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. You see that thing? So what we're reading here is 
they are they're all going to have to bow down to the king of Jacob and observe the high holy days. Because you know, remember, when the nations, they took over us, they forced us to do what? To celebrate their customs and their ways. The Greeks did it, the Persians did it, the Arabs did it, the Portuguese did it. You understand? The Babylonians did it, the Hamites did it. Guess what? When we rule, which will be forever, they all have to follow all these high holy days that are kept in this book, including the Sabbath. Understand that, okay? Now, um, read it again, Acts chapter 15, verse 17, one more again. The book of Acts chapter 15, verse 17. Read. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith mm -hmm. the Lord, who doeth the all that? these things. Ray, is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, give me Hebrews chapter 13. Read verse 8 for me. The book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Go ahead. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. You see that Christ, the, you see, the, the scriptures don't change. The scriptures will remain the way that they've been from the time they were written. You understand? Read that again, verse 8. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 8. Read. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The same yesterday, today and forever. And so, I'm going to end the class right there. All praises to the Lord. All praises to the Most High. Let's break bread, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord, which also I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. All praises to the Most High.